Hello, I think we're ready to start. My name's Sue Smith. I'm the Director of Education for the National Heart and Lung Institute. And I'd like to welcome you to our postgraduate open evening, our first digital one. We're delighted you've been able to join us online. Before we get going, I just want to run through a few housekeeping notices. So could we have the schedule, please? Thank you. So you can see the planned schedule for the webinar. Um, we'll be following my presentation. There'll be a brief presentation from each of the postgraduate programmes and then a Q&A session at the end. Please start asking us questions as we go along. You can ask them throughout the event using the chat function. We'll be answering these through the chat function as well and also the live Q&A at the end. And if you get to the end and find that you have further questions that haven't been answered, do get in touch with us by email. All the contact details for each course are on the web pages. We're going to share a few polls with you in the Q&A as well, so please do let us know your thoughts. The event's being recorded, so we can share it with you afterwards. So if you um, forget something, don't worry, you can always check back. Our presenters are going to be talking to you from around the world, so please bear with us if we have any technical hitches. So let me start by telling you more about NHLI and why we'd like you to join us later this year. So the first thing I wanted to say is that um, education hasn't stopped, the college hasn't closed, and we've continued to teach throughout the pandemic and rapidly adjusted to both remote delivery and assessment. Obviously, we can't predict yet whether we're, well, we're going to be in October. We hope we're going to be on campus, but we'll follow UK government advice and we'll only deliver on campus teaching if the UK government advises us it's safe to do so. Assuming we are on campus, we'll be taking the most rigorous precautions to keep you and ourselves safe. If the government tells us it's not safe to deliver our education on campus, we'll deliver all our programmes remotely. We're currently gearing up to ensure we can deliver the highest quality education online as well as we can do in person. Unfortunately, we're highly experienced in blended learning in NHLI. So whilst we're hoping for the best, we're preparing for the worst. Could I have the next slide, please? So this slide is just to give you an overview of the NHLI's education portfolio. Um, on the left hand side, you can see that we offer three intercalated BSc programmes, a cardiovascular sciences programme, a BSc in remote medicine, which is about delivering medicine in remote uh, locations, not about telemedicine, and also a BSc in translational respiratory medicine. I won't talk about the central block, about the postgraduate taught programmes, because you're going to be hearing more about those very shortly. Um, but I will just mention that we have about 200 PhD students doing PhDs in both clinical and basic sciences. And we also have an MRes. Could I have the next slide, please? And I want to stress that all our teaching, including our BSCs, is underpinned by research. So this slide just lists a few examples of our current research and the things that are currently happening in NHLI. So you can see from this that we're at the forefront of research into the COVID-19 pandemic. And I hope you can also see that our research portfolio is very varied. So it spans cellular and molecular techniques, for example, research on mending broken hearts and gene therapy for cystic fibrosis patients. But we also use and can teach you techniques uh, relating to the whole person, such as investigations on the causes of breathing disorders during sleep. Finally, I hope you can see from this slide that all our research is very practically orientated and we have the goal of improving patient care and the health of our society. And of course, if you study on one of our programmes, you'll be able to contribute to that goal. Could I have the next slide, please? 
I popped this slide in because I wanted you to get an idea of our overall student numbers. I apologise I don't have the numbers for the MSc in Allergy because that programme is joining us from an, another department in the new academic year. But you can see that none of our programmes is huge. You're never going to be just a number to us. You're always going to be in a relatively small cohort. And that means that the teaching faculty will get to know you as an individual and they'll get to know your strengths and really help you build on them. So you're always going to be a person to us and not one of the crowd. Next slide, please. So I, this slide is just really to show you the, the large number of countries that our students come from. 47 countries in addition to the four that make up the United Kingdom. And students join us from every continent. So we really have a very vibrant international student community. And that makes it an exciting place to be. Next slide, please. And finally, from me, before I hand over, I want to stress that whether you're here in London or studying remotely with us, your personal well-being is important to us. So wherever you are, you'll have access to all the college support services that you can find listed on the Imperial web pages. I won't go through them all now um, for the uh, interest of brevity. But in addition, we have certain things that are uh, special to us in NHLI. So all our NHLI students will have a personal tutor and your personal tutor will be someone who's different from, uh, from a different programme to that which you're studying. So you can be sure that anything you share with your personal tutor will remain confidential and won't be shared with your programme director or anyone on your programme without your explicit permission. As well as your personal tutor, NHLI has its own senior welfare tutor and his role is to support both you and the personal tutor because sometimes people have quite complex issues and we have someone very experienced who can um, has more experience and can support all those complex things. And then finally, and potentially important if we do find ourselves, um, teaching remotely. We're fortunate in NHLI that we have our own e-learning technologist who can help us with those issues of um, dealing with IT. So that's all I want to say for you, to you for the time being and I'm going to hand over now to Professor Marta Vazquez Ortiz who's going to talk about our allergy programmes. Over to you Marta. Thank you very much and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present our allergy postgraduate programme. My name is Marta Vazquez Ortiz, I'm a consultant in paediatric allergy and an honorary senior lecturer at Imperial College London and I'm the director of the postgraduate programme in allergy. Next slide please. Do you want to become an expert in allergy? This might be the question you might be asking yourself and I think this very much summarises where our students get to when they take part in our program. And why Imperial College? Well, we like saying that Imperial is the home of allergy. This is where allergen specific immunotherapy was first developed in the world over 100 years ago. Please, next slide. And this tradition for world class uh, education, research and clinical practice has continued over the years. And we're very lucky to have world leading experts in a number of fields in allergy, people like Professor Daran, Professor Kustovic, Saglani, Bush, uh, Dr. Boyle, Dr. Tana, or Dr. Meyer, who are leading research in the field of immunotherapy, the early origins of allergies and asthma, severe asthma, mechanisms around food allergy and anaphylaxis, as well as prevention and treatment strategies. And we're very lucky to have them as our core faculty and have a very close relationship with our students. We have an extensive syllabus covering in a lot of detail all the different aspects uh, in allergy with evidence based and up to the minute information that is relevant for your clinical practice or your own research in this field. We have an innovative blended teaching style and strategy 
and we are very much a flexible program. We're a part time program and most of our students are busy clinicians who work full time and have busy personal lives and they find the program very much suitable to their busy time tables. And as uh, Professor Smith was saying, we're very much an international program, both you know, from the faculty perspective, but also from the students perspective with uh, people from all around the world. And this makes it a very rich environment to learn. We have about 20, 25 students every year, which makes it a very manageable number to have a close relationship. And as, as, as uh, Professor Smith was saying, to really play to your strengths and, and bring you to the next level. Next slide, please. This is the structure of our program, so you can choose if you want to do a postgraduate certificate, which is the first year, including three modules covering the immunology, covering the management of allergic diseases and the new research uh, in allergy and how to get started doing your own research in allergy. You might want to do a postgraduate diploma, which involves the year one plus a second year, where we offer six modules covering in detail the different allergic diseases, or you might wish to do a full MSc, which includes the first two years plus a research project, usually within your own institution, but it can be also with us, either a, a, a um, basic science or a clinical research project, either within year two or as a third year. Think, can you um, put the next slide, please? So I hope that was helpful uh, and I will be very happy to get any questions at the end or, or for you to get in touch with me uh, later on. Thank you very much. And now uh, it's the turn for Professor Mary Morrell, who will be uh, talking about her programme on cardiovascular and respiratory health care. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for that great introduction to the uh, Allergy MSc. Um, uh, if you could have my first slide, thank you very much. My name is Professor Mary Morrell, and as um, Professor Smith has already just alluded to, I do research on people who have respiratory problems, in fact, during sleep. So something that some of us are experiencing at the moment, issues with sleep, but we particularly deal with cardiac and respiratory issues during sleep. In my educational role at NHLI, I'm the course director for the Cardio Respiratory Healthcare MSc, which includes both the PG Cert and the PG JIP. And I have the absolute pleasure of working on that programme with our own dedicated teaching fellow, Dr. Leanne Felkin, who helps uh, me and the faculty to make sure that you have a fantastic experience on this MSc stroke PG JIP, PG Cert. If you'd like to give me my next slide, please. One of the things that I want you to think about while I'm speaking is what you would learn if you did an MSc in cardiorespiratory healthcare. What are the things that would have you register on this course? So, for example, do you want to know about cardiac? Do you want to know about RASP? Do you want to know a little bit more about both of them? Are you more interested in the healthcare or in the research? Because one of the great things about this program is that it spans all of those options. And who do you want to meet? We just heard all about the fantastic people in allergy. Obviously, it's the Heart Lung Institute. Loads of people available for you to meet within heart and lung. So what are the specialisms that you're interested in? Next slide. And so how we structure our program so that you can have all those options is we have four core modules which deal with the foundations of the knowledge that you will need and then also the generic skills that you will need to do healthcare research so that's things like study design looking at things like statistics which a lot of people um, get a little bit hung up about and then we also look at your professional clinical type skills that you might want to do, things around reflective practice, and then how you can use those skills to evaluate clinical care. So we have our core foundation modules, and then we have our specialism modules, and we have some cardiac and some respiratory, and they're really based in the skills of the NHLI. So we do a lot with non-invasive ventilation, for those of you that have worked clinically, things that you might have heard about in the COVID crisis around CPAP, ventilators. And then on the cardiac side, we look at all the innovations in cardiac health care. 
So you can choose those modules yourself to support yourself. And the teaching is both clinical and respiratory. So it has, uh, sorry, research, I'll say respiratory, research, because it has all of the elements that link together to improve healthcare. Next slide. And the way in which we particularly like to teach on the um, cardiorespiratory healthcare MSc is experiential learning. So there's nothing like having a go and actually having a authentic experience of what it's like being on the ward. So, for example, we use assessments that include things like giving information to each other, whether that be in a healthcare setting or in a research setting. Lots of information at the moment being given about COVID, and you may have noticed that some researchers are better at doing that than others. So there are things that we can do to help train you in being able to communicate your science and your healthcare. And what we want to do by the end of your MSc is be able to bring together the innovation and the technology that's available at Imperial College and put it together with your ideas and your thoughts and, and things that you want to work on in cardiorespiratory to improve healthcare. That's our real goal. And the vehicle we use for that is your research project, which is a large part of your MSc. It's a piece of original research where you get to apply all of the different things that you've learned in the modules, be they core modules or specialist modules, to develop your research project. Next day, slide. So the last question that I'll leave you with is, well, what are you going to learn? Who are you going to meet? And where is it going to lead you? So lots of people have different reasons for doing MSCs. It's a big investment, big investment in terms of time and money. And so you might be thinking about, you know, wanting to work in the NHS. Fantastic thing. Lots of lots of opportunities there. You might be thinking of wanting to do maybe further research in a PhD or you might be wanting promotion or your current role. All of those things we can incorporate um, and support you with if you are interested in doing uh, the cardiorespiratory healthcare MSc. So I'm really happy to take questions. You don't have to be a healthcare person to take the MSc, but you certainly need to have an interest in healthcare, which I'm sure you all have. So thank you very much for listening to me. I hope to see you in September. And next up is genes, drugs and stem cells. Thank you. Th thank you, Mary, for that. Um, for an uh, uh, amazing introduction. OK, can I have the next slide, please? OK, so hi, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Fazia Khan. I am the teaching fellow for the MSc PG Cert in Genes, Drugs and Stem Cell Novel Therapies um, course. Um, next slide, please. OK, so key academic people on the course, um, we have um, Professor Uta Greisenberg. She is the director of the MSc course and she's also the module lead for the gene therapy. Um, Sarah Rankin and Dr. Uh, Tristan Rodriguez, they are the module leads for the stem cell regenerative medicine um, uh, course. Anne and Kuhn, Dr. Um, Dr. Anne Burke Gaffney and Dr. Kuhn Wigman, they are the teaching, for, uh, they're the, sorry, the module leads for the pharmacology and I'm the teaching fellow for the course. Next slide, please. OK, so um, just a brief introduction into the structure of the MSc and the PG cert module. So your core modules will consist of uh, um, will happen over 10 weeks from October to December, as well as the PG cert. The advanced module would then follow on from January until March and they would um, be within the eight weeks uh, time frame and the big chunk of our project of our time would be spent on a research project which is in six months time um, and I'm just going to break these down in the next slide please. So what you can see is that you will cover the four core modules, evidence, information and communication, gene therapy, 
regenerative medicine pharmacology within the first term and that's starting from October to December. Once the Dece after you've covered the whole uh, the core modules, you will be given a chance of going on to advanced streams and you will be given a choice of either gene therapy, regen medicine or pharmacology and you will choose those. That would happen over eight weeks and then you'll be given a project. So you could choose your project um, in any of those streams, but those streams are interrelated so you could have a project which is a regen medicine and a pharmacology based project and that would happen uh, in six months. So this, the whole um, uh, core modules plus the advanced module plus pr pr uh, the project phase will cover your MSc. But if you just want to um, lead with the PG set, all you have to do is complete the first four core modules. Next slide, please. So, um, for, the, for 2019, these were our breakdown. We had eight uh, UK students, 11 EU students and 14 overseas students. And as you can tell, they're coming from all part of uh, from different parts of the world. So it's a really, really nice mix and everybody just get together. We have a lot of group work. We have a lot of activities and it's amazing to see everyone coming together. Um, next slide, please. OK, so um, we are asked what are these? So we have the research, we have the lectures from Imperial and from outside um, and you're given enough knowledge, but what are the opportunities outside the main curriculum? So in 2019, we had the opportunity to go to Deloitte a Consultancy Firm. We had a, a workshop for, for the afternoon. Imperial Innovation Team, they are the enterprising team that supports the next generation of students um, inventors. Um, a visit to the Fifth Physics Garden, which is in Chelsea, which is 10 minutes down the road from us. Designing an outreach um, activity, which is a um, a project where you're given a chance to educate the community around Imperial within your chosen field. You have the interdisciplinary hackathon where you um, meet members from different faculties and you're turning your ideas into reality. Panacea Innovation Insight Team, they come from Oxford and they tell you how to start a life science uh, consultancy firm. And then a visit to the British Thoracic Conference. So that's just little, sorry, is it next slide, please? Okay, thank you. Right, thank you. So what are the five reasons that you should choose our master's degree? Amazing for knowledge. I can guarantee you that you will be taught by the best PIs, the best researchers, and, and the best lecturers around Imperial. You'll form amazing connections. It'll enhance your personal development from when you're coming in uh, October to when you leave in September, you will see a, a huge growth. Accelerate your career growth and you're going to be part of the best team and I can reassure you that. Next slide, please. So I'm going to give you just a little um, a video of what the things were we covered in 2019. Oh, is there no sound? Sorry, I think we had a bit of a problem with the sound. And then you're going to be supported by our amazing course administrator, Sarah Ford. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email us on, um, on the email that's stated here or email me. Um, now I will present you the MSc Genomics and Mike Lovett will be speaking to you. Thank you. If you have any questions, please let us know. Hello there, um, my name is Mike Lovett. I'm a 
We, uh, I hold the chair in systems biology, and uh, what's more relevant here is I uh, direct the training program in genomic medicine, ably helped by uh, Dr. Louise Blakemore, who is my senior teaching fellow, and Ellie Wilde, who is the course administrator. Next slide, please. So what is genomic medicine? This is uh, a revolution in, in personalized medicine that is occurring throughout the world, but is really uh, being pioneered by the NHS, who are at the cutting edge. And we're taking genomic data, genetic data, sometimes our DNA sequence, sometimes our epigenetic uh, uh, marks, and seeing how that interacts with our environment and health. And we use that information for effective diagnosis and tailor-made treatments. Next slide, please. So Imperial is really at the forefront of this. We have several hundred investigators who are working on genomic medicine type projects. And in fact, as I've just said, the entire UK is really at the forefront of this and has embarked on a very visionary project which really came to completion last year, which was called the 100,000 Genome Project. And now that has morphed into a 1 million Genome Project and there is talk of a 5 million genome project. That is generating an enormous amount of data about our susceptibility to complex, rare and common diseases. And more relevant is really leading to translation of that into the clinic for diagnosis and treatment. Now that NHS, no, back one slide please, um, that NHS involvement is reflected in the fact that they have funded seven centres, one of which is Imperial, uh, who are preferred providers of training to NHS employees. So if you're interested in this programme, we have been renewed in this funding and we have a substantial number of scholarship places for NHS employees to undertake this training. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that it precludes anybody who isn't with the NHS. About half of our student body is not NHS funded, comes from very diverse backgrounds, and I'll come back to that at the end. Next slide, please. So the structure of our programme is that the, we have a series of modules that are each one month in length. In our pre-COVID world, we had one face-to-face -face teaching week per module, which was usually the second week of the month, which is when students have to be present for that sort of intensive face-to-face -face, um, concepts and discussion series. And then a total of three weeks of online e-learning, distance learning, followed by uh, an assessment that would be delivered online. Um, starting in October, we are contingency planning for uh, delivering all modules online if necessary. So if the government, as Sue alluded to, says it is safe and OK to do this in the usual face to face teaching mode, then we will do that. If not, uh, you, we can guarantee that we will be delivering this online uh, for the entire autumn term. Um, the MSc degree, the total thing, consists of eight modules that are chosen from six cores, which are mandatory cores, and, and then two more from six optionals, plus the research project, uh, which is a little bit shorter than many MSCs. It's a 14-week research project. Next slide, please. So what do you learn in this course? Well, you learn a great deal about human genetics and genetic diseases. And by genetic diseases, I do not necessarily mean simple Mendelian traits uh, or rare diseases. I mean common complex disease, uh, rare and Mendelian disorders. I mean a lot about cancer, a lot about infectious diseases and many other things. You'll certainly learn a lot about genomic technologies, how they work and how to apply them. And you learn quite a lot about bioinformatics, the interpretation of large data sets. Next slide, please. What, where are our graduates now? What do they go on to do? Well, this is just a handful, next slide please, of our almost 200 
uh, graduated students as of the end of this year. Uh, and that's in our first five years in operation. Um, so we're not just a vocational training system here. We are an educational uh, establishment and we uh, aim to build people who have deep and nuanced knowledge of genomic medicine. Many of our graduates are in leadership roles. Uh, they are clinical uh, genomics registrars, which is a new job description within the NHS. Many have returned to their uh, clinical or scientific duties uh, with enhanced expertise and act as interpreters and nodes of knowledge within their centres. Uh, a large number of the basic research people and sometimes the clinical people within our programme have transitioned into PhD programmes and we have a very diverse student body. We have nurses, midwives, uh, junior doctors, medium term registrars and even very senior consultants within our programme. Uh, we have people who are clinical research scientists, some who have transitioned to clinical scientific roles after our programme and some who have successfully applied to the very competitive uh, NHS genomics or genomic counselling scientific tra training programmes. So there is, a, a, there is a wealth of opportunities for genomic medicine expertise in uh, the country and in the world. And uh, I think you're going to find that there are many opportunities and possibilities in doing this programme. I will be happy to answer any questions at the end uh, in the question and answer session. And now uh, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, Professor Petros Nikolianopoulos, who is going to talk about medical ultrasound. So um, I am uh, uh, Petros Nikolianopoulos. I'm one of the uh, consultant cardiologists uh, at Imperial College and Hammersmith Hospitals. Uh, my main interest is um, imaging and in particular uh, echocardiography, whereby I have been one of the uh, key opinion leaders in echocardiography in Europe. I've been past president of the British and European societies of uh, echocardiography and uh, therefore have an extensive network in Europe and uh, beyond. Uh, we established this uh, MSc course uh, some 20 years ago. In fact, we are today uh, celebrating the 20th anniversary of this uh, MSc course in uh, medical ultrasound. Uh, the course uh, has, uh, is both uh, academic and uh, vocational in nature. It aims to produce uh, students who can use uh, research and development skills in order to develop the field of medical ultrasound. The course offers uh, two modules, echocardiography and uh, vascular, each running independently uh, in their respective departments. Uh, Dr. Mo Aslam uh, is the lead for um, vascular stream and uh, the module. Uh, Dr. Abigail Thrash is the lead on uh, physics and uh, Mr. Tony Stedman is the course administrator and is um, the mouth of medical ultrasound and the person to refer to whenever you have um, any issues with the program. Next. Uh, we have uh, three uh, uh, four main teaching hospitals as part of the MSc rotations. Uh, the Hammersmith Hospital, which is the main hub of uh, this course. Charing Cross Hospital, uh, not too far away from here. St. Mary's Hospital and the Royal Brompton Hospitals. The vast majority of students are based at Hammersmith Hospitals both for the vascular aspect as well as the echocardiography module. But we, tra we tend to place uh, students also at uh, Charing Cross St. Mary's and the Royal Brompton, particularly uh, for those students who are interested in uh, adult congenital heart disease. Next. So the, uh, this uh, MSc course offers two um, modules, echocardiography and vascular. 
During the week, uh, we have uh, two to three days of clinical hands-on training. So this uh, course is uh, rather unique because it offers placement. Uh, students are placed on site, which is rather unique and uh, no other um, centers in uh, UK and I believe in Europe offers this, um, this facility. We have uh, lectures during uh, two days uh, of the week and uh, one study day that you can spend in um, the library or at your own home. And obviously, as it is an academic uh, degree, it offers uh, a, a research project, which is part of it's a main part of this uh, course. <clears throat> However, this uh, MSc course is not uh, is not providing a license to practice echocardiography or vascular ultrasound. The license to practice either these modalities is provided by the national societies, the British Society of Echocardiography or the Vascular Society of Ultrasound. So uh, uh, it is therefore an academic degree with uh, offering uh, a, a door to uh, a vocational uh, degree and practice uh, ultrasound. Next. So we offer uh, facilities uh, of all sorts of ultrasound from three-dimensional echocardiography as you see here to all uh, vascular uh, aspects of arterial to uh, uh, venous aspect and uh, people, uh, students are uh, spread all over uh, the three um, uh, hospitals so that each one can specialize in one or the other aspect as they will. Uh, equipment is state of the art. Several uh, uh, manufacturers are um, uh, providing their equipment and you will be able to use and learn all sorts of equipment, the pros and the cons in each one. Next. Uh, this is two examples on uh, the vascular uh, unit on the left and the echo department on the right. Interestingly, the vast majority of the uh, sonographers are um, derived from this MSc course. So it offers opportunities for employment, not only on uh, this uh, site, but also nationally and internationally. A lot of our students have found positions uh, in um, uh, departments of ultrasound, both in the UK and in Europe. Next. What is the background of uh, those students, uh, of potential students? Well, anyone really with a science degree which includes doctors, nurses, uh, biological science degrees, sports science degrees, uh, people who have a background of uh, physiologists uh, and other healthcare professionals and radiographers, all are very welcome to uh, enroll to this program. Lectures are run through uh, October and uh, January and the first trimester is really focused on physics and uh, research methodologies, whereby the, uh, the beginning of the research is, um, is uh, set. Most of the research projects are, uh, are clinical and prospective. Sometimes we need to get ethics uh, approval, which clearly takes uh, some time, but the essence is to learn how to make an application for an ethics uh, committee and uh, so on. From January to until May, we begin the subspecialty, either vascular or uh, echocardiography, with the lectures and uh, clinical practice on patients. Uh, you need, you will need to have 
approximately 70 to 100 uh, patients mixed uh, of all different pathologies that will create your logbook upon which you will be examined. Throughout uh, the year, the project runs in parallel with the different deadlines that you will have to meet uh, over the course of the year. Next. Examination and assessment. Well, in the first instance, you will have mock exams, which are mostly formative, and uh, you will not be, uh, uh, you will not get uh, uh, grades, but it will be more of uh, learning opportunities and uh, you will obtain feedbacks immediately after the mock exams. And finally, you have the finals uh, that will be the, the summative uh, examination uh, in uh, the early summer. Physics are examined uh, through written examination, specialty, uh, MCQs and long answer questions, multiple choice questions. The project, you will have uh, viva presentations and uh, the dissertation. And the clinical exam, it will be practical uh, um, live scanning uh, in front of your internal examiners. Next. Finally, you will be graduated uh, as uh, you heard, and you will be proud to have a degree, an MSc degree from Imperial College that will give you access to job opportunities around the country and beyond. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you everyone for your um, presentation so far. As, as the slide says, we're now in our Q&A session of the webinar. Um, so you've all been submitting your questions throughout and we thank you for that. If you have any more, please just keep to sending them in. But I'm going to firstly introduce you to some of our students that are also present. Um, so we have Mahesh from the allergy course, who's going to hopefully appear soon. And um, I'd just quite like to ask you, Mahesh, what made you apply for this course? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mahesh. I'm one of the pediatric training doctors uh, currently based at uh, uh, East Midlands. So uh, my main uh, interest is uh, pediatric uh, allergy. And I wanted to become a pediatrician with a special interest in allergies. That was my main motive to apply for the Imperial. Uh, we have uh, one of the consultants as well who has done the MSc Masters in Allergy from Imperial. Uh, so that have gave some uh, insight uh, for me into uh, you know different courses available in UK. Uh, at the moment, I'm in postgraduate certificate course in allergy. Uh, I have already attended two modules and uh, I must say that I'm quite uh, happy uh, and that definitely has, you know, just with the two modules uh, in terms of the knowledge and current evidence based practice uh, that has helped me quite a lot. Oh, lovely. Thank you for that. Really good summary there. Um, I'm going to move on to Yavita. So Yavita is going to is one of our MSc students in our cardiovascular and respiratory healthcare MSc. So Yavita, um, could you tell me what you want to do after you do this MSc? Hi. Um, so I really plan on getting a license to practice medicine here in the UK, and I feel like the degree would really help me find a job after. And what has been the best part of your degree so far? I really like um, how close the teachers are. And there are really some fun topics to discuss about. And I'm really lucky to have a really, really great supervisor. So yeah, all goes. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much for replying to that. Um, I'm going to introduce you now to some students from our Genes Drug Stem Cells course. So um, I'm going to introduce Adam. So um, Adam, what has been your highlight so far of your Genes Drug Stem Cells course? Uh, my highlight is from the pharmacology module where we had essentially a workshop on um, sort of how to commercialise uh, on commercialization where we sort of covered 
you take an aspect of research and sort of go into how to make it into therapeutic products. And uh, it was sort of a bit of a competitive uh, workshop where we were put into groups and we had to pitch our ideas and see whose was the best. And uh, obviously my group had won. So that's the highlight for me. <laughs> that's great news, no worries. Thank you, thank you for that highlight. Um, I'm going to introduce you to now to Nanaki from Genomic Medicine. So could I ask you, Nanaki, what you plan to do after you do your genomic medicine PG, PG search dip or MSc? If you could introduce to us which one you're doing as well. Thank you so much. So I'm currently on the genomic medicine MSc and I'm an academic rep for the course. Um, I love how the courses covers a really broad range of topics. So I'm actually considering to doing a PhD in psychiatric genomics, which is uh, quite similar to my MSc dissertation topic as well. Lovely, thank you. And um, finally, I'm just going to introduce you to one of the medical ultrasounds reps um, in case of time, because I know some of your questions need to be answered as well. So um, Jill Warwick, could you let me know or let the viewers know what made you choose this MSc? Hi everyone, my name is Dilwar Katoon and I'm a current cohort for the MSc Medical Ultrasound in the Vascular Stream. Um, and Gemma, to your point, um, I think the main attraction that applied to the MSc Medical Ultrasound was that it's, it's unique in its nature that it's got the both theoretical and the practical side element of the course. And so I was hugely um, impressed the fact that Imperial College provided that placement where many universities don't. And so um, I was hugely lucky one, once I got in and able to kind of work for three of the most um, prestigious NHS Imperial College trusts. So I think that was the main main attraction. Maurice, thank you for your answer there and uh, thank you all. I'm sorry I haven't asked all the reps. I'm just aware we've got a limited time left and I know we have questions to answer. So we've been um, looking at your questions that's coming in and there's one I want to put through to Professor Morell. So a listener has asked, I'm particularly interested in asthma and COPD. Would you be able to, ex would I be able to explore these areas in more depth? Also, as a biomedical sciences graduate, after completing this MSc, what kind of posts can I apply for within the NHS? So we're going to put that to Professor Morell. Sure. Well, the first bit's easy to answer. Yes, of course, you can um, focus on asthma and COPD. COPD is one of um, the areas that I work in, and we have lots and lots of people also involved with allergy. So one of the great things about doing an MSc at Imperial is that you really do get to work with the world experts when you're doing your project. And um, as, our, um, as many of the reps have said, doing the projects is where you really get to meet the people and explore the areas of specialism. And the second question was about jobs within the NHS. I think it was the genomics, Mike, who said how competitive some of the training programmes are within the NHS. In cardiorespiratory, you can be a clinical scientist in the NHS doing things like ECGs, lung functions, et cetera. Those training programs are really hard to get on. So these kind of MSCs give you extra points, if you like. They give you extra um, ability to really um, let the NHS know how you're going to be able to help them for further health care for our patients. So it's it might be a clinical scientist role that you might want to go for. It might be related to a research role within the NHS. There's all sorts of different roles within the NHS. It's such a big employer within the UK. I hope that answers the question. Yes, Mary, it does. Thank you so much for that. And, uh, if listener, you have a reply to that, please let us know. Yeah. Um, cool. Thank you all. So we've had a couple of questions regarding the gene, genes, drugs and stem cells course. So I'm going to put these to Dr. Khan. Um, so one of these questions I would like to ask that since genes, drugs and stem cells program has a laboratory based thesis project, how can this be done remotely? If I can put that to you, Fozia. Um, yep. Pretty sure that by March 2021, we will be given access to our labs. But 
just in case we get there and and we've been told that you know you know nobody's allowed and whatever you will be supported by all the researchers you um, and you will do a dry lab project so our current students are um, currently there uh, doing a lab project uh, dry lab project and which is brilliant because they're still supported by the research group that they wanted to do the project in but it's just the emphasis is changed to a dry lab I hope that answers the question. It does. Was there I'm yeah. going to ask you another one, of course. Yeah, sure. Uh, another genes, drugs and stem cells related question. So uh, it's been submitted. After the research project, are PhDs offered to propose students to continue working in the same team? Is this likely or unlikely? It, I think you will be uh, you will be told that there's vacancy and because the PI wouldn't get to know you, you'll probably stand a better chance of applying and I, I can't guarantee anything, but you, you have to go through the whole, you have to apply for it. But from a student's perspective, you get to see the research team and if you're going to do a PhD and spend three years there, you get to see that, that that's the research that you want to do and then you can definitely apply for it and you can build up this rapport with the uh, PI and his or her research team. So there, there are in the past we've had uh, our students going to a particular PhD within that stream. So we've had that, but I can't guarantee until there's PhD vacancies. All right, thank you. Thank you, Fuzia, for that reply and for answering That's those okay. two questions. Um, I'm going to ask one more because yeah, we're going to sure. move on to closing remarks. I'm going to ask that to allergy. So um, for the allergy program, um, is it doable? Oh, sorry, I've uh, lost my question. Is it is it doable while doing the full time training job? Is the course doable while doing a full time training job? And if not, what would be a realistic time frame to do this lesson full time in training? If I could put that to you, Marta. You know, that's a very, you know, important question. I have to say most of our uh, students uh, are full time clinicians with very busy jobs and, and busy lives and they very much feel the course is, is flexible and is suitable to them. So basically uh, you get three condensed teaching weeks uh, throughout the year. So people basically book leave for that week. They are in campus you know, kind of full time, all day, getting lots. And then the rest of the time, it's uh, online learning that they can spread, you know, throughout the month or the week uh, based on their other commitments. So it's, it's very flexible. So, you know, and, and I'm happy, you know, to sort of have a, you know, we approach uh, separately, you know, to, to ask more specific questions about that. Great, thank you, Marta, for that reply. Um, I think that was our last question. If you have any questions we haven't answered or you want more information, at the end we're going to put a slide up with each of the courses email addresses, so please feel free to contact them then. I'm just going to now reintroduce Professor Smith back for the closing remarks. So first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who's joined us this evening. Um, we're delighted to actually have so many attendees. And also, of course, I want to thank the people who've spoken to you and even more so the people that you haven't seen, the production team who behind the scenes have worked enormously hard to make this session happen. So um, as Gemma uh, told you, the uh, contact details for all our programmes are on screen and we look forward to hearing from you and hopefully meeting many of you later this year. Um, if you have got more questions, keep them coming in via the email and we will get back to you. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye and stay safe in these hugely challenging times. Goodbye. <laughs>